Hi, Todd Orchide here with GTL Real Estate. This week I wanted to speak uh, real quick just about uh, a question we, we sometimes get from owners either who have um, just started renting their property out, they've just moved in their first tenant, or possibly they, they had another tenant before, they moved out and then another tenant moved in, and then all of a sudden uh, work orders start coming in. Uh, so, you know, frequently, you know, we get a couple different questions from this. Number one is, why do I suddenly have all these uh, service requests? Um, you know, I was just living in the property, it was fine, or the previous tenant was just there, it was fine. Why are these suddenly coming in? Uh, and the other question is, you know, should we get rid of this tenant? Um, so I wanted to cover both of those things uh, today. Um, the, uh, the first thing uh, we should point out is if you were living in the property before, just understand that you know there's a difference between what an owner will put up with basically and what a uh, a tenant will when they move into the house so part of being a tenant you know that person uh, has an expectation that stuff is just going to be fixed a lot of owners when they're living in the house something breaks and you know for example let's say you got a four bed three bath house um, and there's a bathroom uh, upstairs in a guest room that you just never use so the toilet it uh, doesn't work that great, but you just kind of don't really care much about it because you're not expecting company for six months, and so you just kind of let it go. The tenants usually won't do that. You know, the way they look at it, you know, they're paying for rent. They want everything to work. It's just, it's part of the, you know, the, the mentality of renting. Um, they just expect stuff to be fixed um, because they're a tenant. You know, they, that's just an expectation from them uh, for their landlord, right or wrong. That's, that's just kind of what they expect. Um, so, you know, that's why in some cases, you know, a, a landlord who was living in the property before just kind of let some stuff slide that the tenant won't always uh, ignore. And as a landlord, you have a legal obligation to fix something if it's broken. So, you know, it is something you have to get taken care of, even if it's something that you might have kind of looked past and said, this isn't really a big deal for me when I live here. For the tenant, they might consider it a big deal and they might expect it to be fixed. Um, now, of course, this does not apply to cosmetic issues. So like I said in that example, that's a toilet that's not working. You know, that's not a cosmetic issue. That's an actual fixture in the house that isn't doing what it's supposed to. So that needs to be fixed. But if a tenant moves in and let's say the, the hardwood floors are scratched in, in one of the rooms, um, that was something they knew when they took the property. It's a cosmetic issue. Uh, you don't have to fix that. So occasionally we'll get these service requests from tenants for those kind of things, for cosmetic issues. You know, they move in, they sign for the house, they say they're okay with its condition, and then all of a sudden a week later they start submitting these service requests saying they want this stuff fixed. When they do that, we'll tell them no. You know, we'll just flat out say we're not going to do that. You moved in with the property in this condition. It was noted on your move-in inspection. That's the cosmetic condition of the property you agreed to take. So in those cases, we don't have to do anything on those repairs. Now, you certainly could if you wanted to, but you certainly don't have to. And, and our default response on that is, you know, property was accepted as is cosmetically. Um, so, th so those are two different areas there, you know, cosmetic or, or actual defects. Um, so th those are a little bit different. Um, but when it, when it comes to an actual, you know, defect in the property, something that's broken, there's a, there is a legal obligation to fix that. So, you know, even if it was something you might not have worried about, the tenant will probably report that it will have to be fixed. Um, the other thing to think about is sometimes stuff just wears out. You know, you could live in the house for a long period of time and then two months after a tenant moves in, the garbage disposal stops working. Uh, it could be because the tenant jammed something in the disposal and if we find something like that, we'll charge the tenant for it. But honestly, it could also just be that it broke. You know, you lived in the property for say eight years and the disposal wore out. You know, that kind of stuff happens sometimes. So just try to be understanding about that. Um, you know, the tenant has a reasonable expectation that stuff is going to be fixed when it breaks. Uh, and, uh, you know, as long as they didn't break it, uh, as long as it wasn't their fault, then as a landlord, you know, at least in the states we do business, there is a legal obligation to get that stuff fixed. So just keep in mind, sometimes stuff does wear out, uh, even if it was working perfectly when you moved out of the house. Um, the other thing is, you know, some tenants just expect more than others. You know, this comes into play when you, uh, when you have a, a switch in tenants. So you had a tenant that was there in the property maybe three or four years, they move out. The new tenant moves in and, you know, a week after they move in, they start reporting things that need to be fixed. Um, a lot of times what, it, what the case is there is just different expectations of different tenants. Uh, especially with a tenant who's lived in the property for a very long time, a lot of times they start to view the property kind of like an owner and you know they'll kind of overlook things just like I said earlier a lot of owners do when they live in their in their own house 
You know, there's things that they just say, ah, oh, that's not a big deal to me, so I won't worry about it. But then the new tenant moves in and, you know, they want everything to be working, so it's a big deal to them. So a lot of times that's what we see. Um, you know, the, the previous tenant, they just didn't care about it. They didn't report it. Uh, and the new tenant, they move in and they do care about it. They want it fixed. So sometimes that happens. You know, it's not necessarily that the new tenant's being unreasonable. It's just the old tenant was being really lenient. And that's why you didn't get those things reported. And what I would say about that is, you know, it's, it's really a, a good thing. Um, that the tenant reports real issues. Now, if a tenant is reporting cosmetic stuff, like I said, we'll tell them no, we'll explain to them they have no reasonable expectation that that'll be fixed. If they're reporting bogus stuff, you know, if they're just reporting something and our repair crew shows up, you know, for example, recently we had someone reported oven's not working and we show up and oven's working, you know, it's, it's working perfectly. Uh, and it just wasn't heating up as quickly as they thought it should, but that's how quickly that oven heats up. So, you know, when that, something like that comes in, we'll charge the tenant for that. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. If, if something's just a bogus, illegitimate work order, uh, we're not going to make you pay for that. We're gonna make the tenant pay for that. Um, now, of course, you'll pay for the vendor, you know, to pay their invoice on the front end, but then we tell the tenant, you've got 30 days to reimburse the owner. If you don't, then there's going to be late fees involved. So, you know, we collect that money for you when a tenant does something like that. But if it is a legitimate repair request, you know, if they're reporting something that's broken, um, even if it's a lot of service requests, you know, they move in and then they submit five service requests. If all of those things really are broken, it's in your best interest to get those things fixed. You want your property kept in good condition because the longer you let stuff go, the more expensive usually it is to fix it. You know, if you fix it right away, it's going to be much better than letting it go uh, and things can just deteriorate. You know, that's especially true with things like plumbing. If you've got a small leak under the sink and the tenant doesn't report that, you know, you may think it's good at that point because you're not paying for a plumbing uh, company to come out and fix a small leak. But, you know, later on, three years down the road, when that tenant hasn't reported that and now there's wood rot and mold underneath that sink and everything has to be torn out, drywall work has to be done, mold remediation, then you'll really wish that that tenant had reported that. So, you know, it's, it is a good thing uh, when tenants report legitimate issues. You want to keep the property in good condition. It's better for you from an, a long-term investment standpoint. Uh, it's better to keep tenants in the property longer. You don't want to be, you know, frankly, a slumlord, as the saying goes, not getting things fixed because what that results in is bad tenants and frequent tenant turnover, which, as we always say on these videos, is the biggest expense a landlord can ever have is tenant turnover. You want to keep that tenant in your property as long as possible, um, as long as they're a good tenant. And someone who reports real issues is a good tenant. It might be a little frustrating, you know, when you first run out your house and you're getting several service requests in all at once, but ultimately that's a good thing for your investment. You want to make sure that, that the property is kept in good condition because that'll make sure you can rent it quickly. And once you rent it quickly, you get that tenant in there, you want them to stay for a very long time. That's what'll get you your best return on investment. And that's the way you do that. You know, repairs are the number one reason that tenants say in polling data that they leave a property. So when they don't renew a lease, that is the number one reason they aren't happy with the way that the owner is taking care of the property. So, you know, that's something we focus on. We want to get those repairs done quickly and, uh, and properly. Um, so, you know, keep in mind, it's not necessarily a bad thing that a tenant is uh, reporting uh, several issues when they just move in. So that, that really is probably in your best interest. But if it's not, like I said, if they're reporting, you know, cosmetic issues, we'll just tell them no. Or if they're reporting bogus things, then we'll charge them for that. So, uh, you know, if it's not a legitimate issue, remember, you don't have to worry about it. So even if you're getting a slew of re service requests coming into your email, if they aren't legit, you know, if it's just uh, cosmetic things, don't let it stress you out. Just know that we're going to take care of that. We're going to tell that tenant no, and it's not going to be an issue. So that, that's what we're here for. So you don't have to deal with that stuff. We have those email notifications that go to you just so you're aware of what's going on. But it's not anything you have to worry about. We'll take care of all of it, uh, and we'll make sure that those repair requests are all legit. If you have any questions, uh, send us an email, support at gtlrealestate.com. Thanks.